The oldest serving leader in the world, Samoa's head of state, has died at the age of 94. The question now is who will succeed Maliatoa Tanumafili II? How State TV announced the passing of a much-loved leader. Maliatoa died in hospital where he was admitted about a week ago. Today they sang the praises of the man who guided Samoa for decades. We haven't had any big problems in doing his watch and I think this says a lot about him. He's gentle in his speech, he's gentle in the manner, and uh, the country loves him. Malutoa was the head of state for 45 years. He has lived to the extraordinary age of 94. He's been a father figure to his people, and there will be great sorrow in Samoa today. Malutoa became joint head of state when Samoa gained independence in 1962. He strode the world stage here at Prince Charles' wedding, but he always saw himself as a servant of his people. The door is always open to the smallest child, to the eldest person in Samoa. He's able to uh, relate to them in a simple, humble way. Here in Auckland, which has one of the largest Samoan communities in the world, news of Marley Ator's death came as a shock to many attending Sunday church services. It's a loss for us because, I mean, as Samoan people, I mean, he's one big figure that we've always had around for a long time. He's the father of our country, and he's been uh, <clears throat> a good example for everybody. Maliator was well known as a follower of the Baha'i faith. He attended St. Stephen's and Wedley College in New Zealand as a youngster. His death, another changing of the old guard in the Pacific. It's a huge passing, and on top of so many recent leaders, you know, the Māori Queen, uh, the King of Tonga, um, Reverend Sior, you know, so many. We're losing that generation of leaders, and um, it's a sad thing, you know, it's a real passing of a generation. And as Samoa prepares for the funeral in six days' time, a story springs to mind. Once asked why he didn't call himself a king, Maliator replied, because in Samoa, everyone's a king. Thousands of Samoans have turned down in the capital, Apia, to farewell their head of state. Malia Toa Tanumafile II has been taken from his home to lie in state in Parliament ahead of his funeral tomorrow. Our Pacific correspondent Barbara Jureva joins us now from Apia. Barbara. Talofa lava, Wendy. Well, Malia Toa Tanumafile lies in state in the House of Parliament behind me. This evening there are going to be people coming to pay their respects and that includes New Zealand's Governor-General and Prime Minister Helen Clark. But earlier today, thousands of Samoans lined the capital streets to farewell their leader. The father of the nation travels down his capital's well-worn streets for the last time, farewelled by the people he led and loved. He's a very humble person, and uh, we wish him that he'll find a place in heaven. Little wonder the people grieve. Their paramount chief is credited for steering Samoa on a stable and peaceful path for the last 45 years. Maliatoa Tanu Mafili has always been a part of these people's lives. So for them, this is more than the passing of a great leader. This is the end of an era. It's a very unique uh, occasion, this one is. And which is why you have seen the whole country turn up to mourn. Parliament, where he officiated as a head of state, is now sheltering him on the eve of his funeral. As scores of people came to say their final farewell, a parade of respect was also taking place at Maliator's family home. International dignitaries, including Tonga's Princess Pilulebu, made their own pilgrimage. My father really reflected humanity humbleness and a great deal of love for his people. I think he'll be sorely missed. And not just by locals. Samoans living in two of New Zealand's largest cities are represented by their mayors. But a cloud of grief lies over Samoa tonight as the nation remembers a great man and the his Samoan legacy. The Samoan head of state, Malia Tuatanumafili, has been laid to rest in a service that combined the pomp and ceremony befitting a nation's leader. When he died last week, Malia Tua was the world's longest serving leader. 
with dignitaries from around the world attending, today's ceremony brought the tiny Pacific nation to a standstill. Reporter Fenner Owen was at the funeral and joins us now live from Apia. Fenner. Well, I'm at the Royal Samoan Country Club and the late head of state loved his golf. Uh, some of his golfing mates are having a drink for him tonight. But of course, the day started on a more somber note. With Mount Fire shrouded in mist as a backdrop, the casket was silently carried from Parliament House onto the Malai. The service was attended by about 400 guests and hundreds more onlookers, Pacific royalty sitting alongside the Māori King Tuhetia and Prime Minister Helen Clark, listening to eulogies from the Samoan Prime Minister and the son of the late Head of State. In yeah, the region of Samoa, as a nation, that will flow with challenges of change, yet still hold on to foundations of its culture. Just 200 metres down the road, Maliatoa's seaside tomb awaited him. His father and grandfather are also entombed here. Tofa, goodbye, they sang, then the centuries-old farewell call for the Maliatoa chiefs. The family paid their respects and by midday it was over. Prime Minister Helen Clark paid tribute to the man who helped Samoa achieve independence from New Zealand. I think it's extremely important that New Zealand is represented at the highest level here today because of the strength of the bond with Samoa itself, the only country in the world that we have a treaty of friendship with, and also because of tremendous respect for Maliatoa. The world's oldest head of state is laid to rest. All has come from near and far to farewell Samoa's longtime leader. Maliatoa Tanumafili lay in death as he lived life, safe in the hands of his people. They delivered their last gift to the man who led them for 45 years, a ceremony fit for a king. Every man is a king. And a king, too, is a man. So it was with Maliatoa, who treated royalty and commoners with the same respect. Today, Tongan King George Tupo V came to return that respect, joining leaders and dignitaries from around the world. But it was the Samoan people who showed their hearts with one voice. <laughs> In his lifetime, he had a vision of Samoa as a nation that will flow with challenges of change, yet still hold on to foundations of its culture. This vision was woven through Maliatoa's farewell. While traditional gatekeepers kept vigil over a fire protecting his spirit, his body was escorted to the tomb by more modern warriors. This tomb's been especially prepared for Maliatoa, not just because he's the head of state, but because he's a tama ainga. He holds one of four kingly titles here in Samoa. The national flag was given to his family, a family united in grief. <laughs> Then it was time for Maliator to be parted from the land he loved.